of the ladies that is here, um, one of the ladies that I like to recognize your presence. Um, uh, uh, a broken heart with the use of finance to institute a public private platform and develop a public PPP framework that will have more public private partnerships in the city to, to, to come on board. The Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry has a strong link with the private sector. Sarata Konate emphasized the pivotal role ESCO is going to play in the country. Kuri Trust has decided to build the foundation for their business on, which are the formation and strengthening of partnerships with local banks here in the country, and also another interesting um, um, pillar, which is niche marketing. You know, niche marketing has been proven to be very effective it is focused and very driven, and you can concentrate on a particular um, uh, goal and objective and uh, ultimately deliver excellent services to your members or to your clients. Prudent Trust Limited is the latest company in the country to open its doors to the public at a symbolic launch at its headquarters in Pajara. In the coming weeks, months or years, many people are going to closely monitor the achievements or challenges recorded by the company. Ibrahim Abalde, GRTS. The Royal Gibraltar Regiment and members of the Gambia Armed Forces will conduct a training exercise from Friday, November 2nd to Wednesday, November 28, 2012, around the general areas of Fajara, Yundum, and the range in Brikama as part of the Gambia Armed Forces pre deployment training. A media release from the Defense Headquarters informs the public that the training will involve the movement of troops and the use of blank and live ammunition, especially around the Lance Corporal Bojang Range in Brikama. The release urges inhabitants of mentioned areas not to panic since it is a routine exercise and calls on them to avoid the area around the range during the training period. That takes us to our first break. We'll be right back. Welcome back and to news outside the borders of the Gambia. A new report by the rights group Amnesty International says Nigeria's government should do more to protect its people from the Islamist militant group Boko Haram. The group has waged a terrorist campaign in Nigeria for years, creating widespread fear and calling itself the Nigerian Taliban. Amnesty International condemns the violence by Boko Haram, but it says the government's heavy-handed reaction could be making matters worse. Details in the CNN report released Thursday by Amnesty International is calling on the Nigerian government to ensure the protection of its people living under the threat of attack from the Islamist group Boko Haram. The group, whose name means Western education is sacrilege, is blamed for killing more than 500 people in bombings and suicide attacks this year alone. But the report titled Nigeria, trapped in a cycle of violence, also faults the Nigerian government's failure to protect the population and says the country's security forces have, quote, perpetrated serious human rights violations in their response. And it goes on to say that the cycle of attacks and counterattacks has been marked by unlawful violence on both sides with devastating consequences for the human rights of its people. Amnesty International says that it's calling on Boko Haram to stop the violence, and it also lays out recommendations for the Nigerian government to ensure that its people are protected from acts of terror by Boko Haram or any non-state actors, and that the rights of its citizens are not violated just in the name of national security. Vladimir Dutier, CNN, Lagos, Nigeria. A U.S. research institute has said that the country's Latino community of some 23 million voters can have a big say in the November 6 presidential race. Even though it is believed that 70 percent of Latinos favor Barack Obama, there are those who share the Republicans' conservative ideas. Meanwhile, both camps are stepping up their campaign in Spanish and swing states where undecided voters could make the difference. CFI has the rest of that story. To a U.S. research institute, America's Latino community is a sleeping giant. 23 million Latino voters 
make up 11% of the overall electorate. But Latinos vote less often than other groups. The Serrano family in Los Angeles, however, is very interested in politics. Latinos in America are becoming more aware of their political potential, and both presidential candidates are wooing the Latino vote. We can be a very powerful group, and we could enact change that will benefit not just Latinos, but I think the whole country as a whole. According to U.S. opinion polls, 70% of Latino voters say they will vote for Barack Obama, even if many of them are disappointed with his failure to live up to pledges of immigration reform. Deportations have gone up under the Obama administration, and it, it's really sad because one of the things he had said was that he was going to fix immigration, and he was going to push and actively go after immigration reform, and for whatever reason, he, he hasn't been able to succeed. Mitch Romney expects to garner 20% of the Latino vote. The Republicans are paying for oppressive policies towards immigrants in several southern states. However, some Latinos share the Republicans' conservative ideals. They are hostile to abortion, gay marriage, and want minimal regulation in the business sector. I like the Republican philosophy. I like the respect for private life. The government can't solve all problems. The Democrats and Republican candidates are stepping up their campaigns in Spanish in swing states, where undecided voters could make the difference. There are also a number of non-partisan organizers who are simply encouraging voters to go out and cast their ballots on Election Day. On the 6th of November next, the sleeping Latino giant could wake up. Sometimes it takes a story of a single person or family to crystallize the mystery of civil war. CNN's Our Demon meets a young victim of a family in Syria. His life changed in one terrible second. And a warning, some of the scenes in this report are difficult to watch. Many other boys his age, 11-year-old Abdurrahman wanted to be a professional soccer player when he grew up. But like so many others in his homeland of Syria, right, right, the right. violence shattered his dream. He doesn't say much beyond that, at times simply nodding, or smiling sweetly in response, or seemingly lost in his memories. Tears Omar can't control fall silently. The thoughts of what his baby brother endured are too much for the 21-year-old. Mom woke me up, stand up immediately. What's, what's happening? She said Abdurrahman went out and the airplane is uh, roaming, circulating above, and uh, you need to get, uh, get him back to the house. Omar was too late. He found his brother in the hospital. Once he saw me, he shouted, Omar, shouted with all his strength. When I got closer, I saw his leg and just yelled. I started crying for around five hours. Abdurrahman's leg was amputated in a makeshift field hospital, the basement of a mosque. After he woke up, I was just, I was just saying, uh, I, I, t I was crying. I couldn't also control myself. He said, please don't cry. If you love me, don't cry. And that is when Omar made Abdurrahman a promise that he would walk again. He started to hang on with that idea. So I'm going out, uh, and uh, he he kept me saying to me, "When are we going? When are we leaving?" Yeah, because once every 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 time the firing jet comes, he says, "When are we leaving? We should leave." Omar is now an expert at changing his brother's bandages. He started to save money for a prosthetic, but realized that it was going to take too much time. He began asking around, and a group of visiting Egyptian doctors told him about the Global Medical Relief Fund, a small U.S. NGO dedicated to helping children badly injured in disaster and war zones. Its founder, Alyssa Montanti, was quick to respond. But first, the brothers had to get to Turkey. 
A car drove them as close to 